What's going on, everybody? This is Brian from SneakerFiles.com, recapping the news. Now, this intro might be a little longer than usual. There's a couple things I wanted to go over. But before I get into that, greatly appreciate a thumbs up. And if you're new here, make sure to subscribe by hitting the button below. Now, I just wanted to apologize because on my May Air Jordan and Nike release dates video, there was a release I forgot about, and it was a big one. It is the Air Jordan 1 High OG Spider-Verse. I should have included that in the previous video. Somehow I just overlooked it. I'm not entirely sure how I did that. I did include it in this video, but that will be later on. Also, I apologize on getting this video out to you guys so late in the week. Usually I post Mondays at the latest Tuesdays. I've been really behind with work right now, so I wanted to try and catch up on that. Unfortunately, I still haven't caught up yet, but I didn't want to miss a week if I didn't have to, so that's why I got this video here. But for some of the highlights in this video, we have a first look at the Air Jordan 1 High OG Satin Bread, as well as the Air Jordan 8 Playoffs, the Air Jordan 12 Filled Purple, aka Lakers, and the Air Jordan 4 Red Cement. Now, there's a ton more from Jordan Brand. I mean, there's a lot. We got a solid lineup from Nike, a couple things from Reebok, and one thing from New Balance. And now without wasting too much more of your time, let's jump into the news. Celebrating the 30th anniversary of the New Balance 998, the brand will bring back the OG gray pair. The shoes were originally released in 1993, and as you can see, they come dressed in mostly shades of gray. Constructed with mesh and pigskin suede, we have reflective silver on the in logos on the panels and white on the laces and midsole. Other details includes a black and gray rubber outsole. So if you're looking to grab this pair, they drop on May 12th and the retail price is $185. Releasing soon is the Reebok Shaq Attack Miami. This pair pays tribute to when Shaq was playing for Miami, and it also comes just in the Heat's alternate Floridians colors. Utilizing white leather on the upper and black textured overlays, pink and orange accents land on the tongue, eye stay, exposed stitching, and the outsole. So if you want to grab this pair, they drop on May 12th, and the retail price is $180. Reebok is going to give a few of their models an aged makeover, kind of like what Jordan Brand has done. And one of those is the Reebok Question Mid Vintage Red Toe. Now it comes in the same OG Red Toe color blocking that Allen Iverson wore during his 1996 rookie season. But as you can see, the overall look is aged. So it features chalk white leather on the upper with a faded red suede on the toe box. They also come with exposed foam on the tongue, and an aged yellow semi-translucent outsole. This pair drops tomorrow, May 5th, exclusively at footlocker.com, and then a wider release will take place at reebok.com later this spring. The retail price will be 170. <music> Dropping later this month, we have the Nike Air Max 95 Stadium Green. This is a women's exclusive and it comes dressed in black, stadium green, pearl gray, medium gray, light graphite, and white. This is actually a really nice pair. I wish they released in both men's and women's sizing. And they'll debut on May 17th via the sneakers app and the retail price will be 175 After receiving a first look at the Nike KD16, we now have a closer look at the Nike KD16 NY vs NY. This shoe pays tribute to Nike's yearly high school summer basketball tournament for New York City's five boroughs. Utilizing red across the upper, a tribute to the Big Apple, we then have white and metallic gold accents on the swoosh logos, NY vs NY on the tongues, and Easy on the heels. The shoes come constructed with a textured multi-layer upper, synthetic mud guards that wraps the shoes, and features a new TPU cage system with ventilation on both the lateral and medial sides. Finishing the look is a white rubber outsole. Currently scheduled to release on August 12th, the retail price will be $150. In my opinion, there's a lot of Nike Dunks releasing and most of them are kind of basic to me. There's nothing to them. So not every one I feature, obviously because the videos would be over an hour long, 
But here we have the Nike Dunk Low Next Nature, known as Floral Tapestry. Dropping in women's sizing, this pair features a phantom, black, light magenta, pink foam, chlorophyll, and pale vanilla color combination. Utilizing recycled materials, the shoes also feature a hemp-like texture on the base and black canvas overlays with floral print. Black leather appears on the swoosh logos and heel tabs with volts across the insoles and Nike's pinwheel logo. Finishing the look is a cell midsole and a black rubber outsole. Unfortunately, we don't have a release date for this pair. They are expected to debut sometime later this year and the retail price will be 110. We have another Nike Dunk that will feature satin. This is the Nike Dunk High Satin Goldenrod. Constructed with satin, mesh, and leather throughout, we have black on the base, tongue, laces, and insoles with goldenrod, which is a shade of yellow, on the swoosh logos, overlays, liner, rubber outsole, and the tongue and insole branding. Finishing the look is white on the midsole. I kind of like how they're taking classic colorways and giving them a satin makeover. I believe the UNLV pair is dropping on May 5th. This one I'm going to assume it's going to drop sometime in fall, although we don't know for sure. And the retail price will be $125. We have a first look at the Ambush Nike Air More Up Tempo. Now, this isn't your traditional Air More Up Tempo. What I've noticed a lot of people are leaving out is that this is actually a low top. So to my knowledge, this will be the first time that the Nike Air More Up Tempo releases as a low. And we just have preview images. You can't really tell from these photos that it's a low, but I'm curious to see how these are gonna look, just a side angle of them. So this pair features tan nubuck on the upper, a black embroidered mini swoosh on the toe box, mesh tongues, and another swoosh on the heels. Yellow fills in the air branding on the panels with ambush logos on the midsole. Other details from what we can see is that the shoes feature olive on the laces and a black rubber outsole. Now, I don't have a specific release date, but I was told that holiday 2023 is when they're expected to debut. More than likely, there will be another colorway, although that's not confirmed just yet. Nocta will bring back another shoe, one that I think for the first time will retro. Now, we saw Nocta put their own spin on the Zoom Flight 95 in the Hot Step Air Terra, but now they're going to bring back the Nike Air Zoom Drive. For those that don't know, the Air Zoom Drive was originally released in 1999 and is part of Nike's Alpha project. Now, that project also included the Air Presto, Air Tune Max, Air Zoom GP, and many more. Now, the details on this are slim. However, there's going to be two colorways, one in black and white. The other will be white, summit white, and black. More than likely, they'll have some sort of spin or twist to them. They'll also feature co-branding throughout, and they are expected to return with a Zoom Air unit in the hill and a moderator plate underfoot. So, I was told holiday 2023 is when the two colorways are expected to release. It could be sooner, and the retail price will be $165 each. Months and months back, we found out that the Nike Air Flight Hirachi Lakers Away will be releasing. We had some images of the OG pair, however, we now have official photos, so this is a confirmed drop. The shoes were worn by Kobe Bryant that he wore during his sneaker free agency. They also feature a black varsity purple and Del Sol color combination. Now, I know the OG colorway was supposed to release in April, that didn't happen. Obviously, for some reason, they've been delayed. I'm not sure why. Maybe shipping issues. I haven't seen them pop up anywhere, actually. But between the OG colorway and this one, I definitely want to have this one just because you don't see this pair that often. Anyways, they're expected to debut fall 2023, and the retail price will be $125. Quick update on the Haritos Nike SB Dunk Low. I know I talked about the shoe in my May Jordan brand and Nike release dates video, However, we have a little bit of an update as for the release. Now, they will release at skate shops on May 6th. I believe that there were some draws that went out already. I know personally I signed up for CCS and PLA Skate, which is close to my house. I don't expect to hit on either of those. However, there will be a second chance and that will be on May 10th. So that's when they're dropping on the sneakers app and the retail price will be 130. In my opinion, this pair is nice. This is the Nike SB Dunk Low Mystic Red. 
The shoes feature a mystic red, emerald rise, rugged orange, and rosewood color combination. Going over the pair, they come constructed with a hairy suede on the upper and mesh on the tongues. Mystic red appears across the upper with turquoise accents on the swoosh logos, Nike embroidered on the heels, and the tongue and insole branding. Finishing the look is a speckled deep burgundy rubber sole. This is a 100% pickup for me. I'm pretty sure that they won't go crazy. I know that's hard to say for SBs, but it's not a collab. Some colorways don't do as well. And from what I can tell, the reaction to them wasn't that great. A lot of people didn't care for them. I could be wrong. It could be totally different here. A lot of you guys might actually like them. But they also kind of remind me, not quite, but kind of, a reverse strawberry cough, but in low top form. Again, that's kind of a stretch, but maybe a little bit to some of you might see that. Now, as for the release details, we don't have any expected to debut later this year, and the retail price will be 110. Not only do we have a first look at the Crenshaw Skate Club Nike SB Dunk Low, but we have a detailed look. So this shoe has caused a little bit of controversy over the past day, maybe two days now by the time this video goes live. I'll get onto the controversy a little bit later on. I'll just go over the shoes, although there's not a lot of details available, but this shoe comes highlighted in shades of brown, blue, and green with crack leather on the overlays. Now, it's being said that that crack leather will actually wear away. I don't know the design it will showcase once it's worn away. It could be that brown slash burgundy like hue, or it could just be more green. I'm not entirely sure, but how they look now looks good to me. We also have co-branding on the tongue labels inside of the tongues, insoles, and heel tabs. The outsole is translucent. It shows off more of his branding. And since the founder of Crenshaw Skate Club is from South Central Los Angeles, I believe that's the reason why there's a palm tree. Again, I'm sure the whole backstory will come out on these shoes. And currently, they're expected to debut in October. And unfortunately, we don't have a retail price. Now, the controversy surrounding this shoe started by Master Chef. I'm going to call him Master Chef. I believe it's Master Chefian. But he made a post and it says, World's first look in hand, Crenshaw Skate Club, Nike SB. He showed off some images. Technically, it wasn't the first look. I know a dude named I Am Rico Suave. He posted them an in-hand look. It doesn't really matter at this point. They both post great images. But the controversy actually is Nike SB the official account made a comment on his post, and it reads, Imagine getting the opportunity to create a dunk only to have an account named Master Chefian leak it with no context to the story. And then there's an emoji of a chef and a clown. Now, this might be a hot take, I don't know, but these images that leaked, they've been going around for years and years and years. I remember back in the day on Nike Talk in the early 2000s, there would be images that leak. Sure, they weren't collabs, but there were still upcoming colorways and somebody designed them. Also, I'm sure if Master Chef had the backstory, he would have posted it as well. And that's the only part I feel sorry for Crenshaw Skate Club because I could tell from the shoes there's a lot of thought that went into this. It's connected to him and his brand. But I have no sympathy for Nike SB or Nike at all because they could prevent all of this. They allow this stuff to leak. It's stolen from their factory. Yes, it's all overseas. They could either beef up the security. So if Nike really cared, maybe they should beef up their security. And I know for a fact Nike doesn't care. I mean, most of you guys know I get leaked stuff straight from employees from the brand. In most cases, this builds up hype for the shoe. And they know that. Now, this Nike SB account is probably ran by an intern. I don't think it's going to be one of the big names over there. But I have noticed that this account says some spicy things. And I'll admit, it makes for good content. It has everybody talking. And again, I do feel sorry for Crenshaw Skate Club just because their design leaked so early. I mean, even if I designed a shoe from Jordan Brand in Nike, I would expect that shoe to leak. The only thing I would be upset about is if I didn't leak it myself. But I would still laugh about it. Anyways, you can let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as soon as I have more updates on this shoe, I definitely will make sure to update you. Just a quick update on the Jordan Luca 2. 
and some images recently popped up which shows that they glow in the dark. I actually think these are really nice. And other than the glow in the dark detailing, we don't have any additional details. This specific colorway is expected to debut summer and the retail price will be 130. Some on-feed photos of the Air Jordan 3 Hide and Sneak recently popped up. This is a grade school exclusive. And other than that, we also have a release date change. Not a big one, but this pair features a white, black, iron, light ash gray, cell, and cement gray color combination. This shoe also comes with a large elephant. In these photos, it looks like it's basically a hang tag. However, in the previous photos that we saw, it could be attached over the tongue. So maybe you can wear them both ways. But for the new release date, they originally were scheduled to debut on June 10th. Now they're going to release on June 6th. So pushed forward just by four days and the retail price will be 150. We also have official photos of the Air Jordan 5 SC Craft in light or wood brown. Now, what's funny is on quite a few release date calendars, I saw that the release date was moved forward, originally expected to debut on June 17th. Those release calendars actually said they would debut on May 17th. Now, that isn't the actual date. The actual date is June 17th. But I just thought that was odd. It wasn't just this shoe. It was also the Toro Air Jordan 6. That same release calendar said that they were going to debut in May, but it's going to be in June. But let me know your thoughts on this pair down below. I haven't seen a lot of people talking about them. To me, it's not a bad shoe. It's just not something I plan on picking up. And the retail price is 210 Nike aired the Hair Jordan commercial on January 26, 1992, which was during Super Bowl 26. This is where Michael Jordan and Bugs Bunny started their friendship, which eventually led to the film Space Jam. Now, throughout the years, we've seen various shoes inspired by Bugs, and here we have the Air Jordan 1 Low Rabbit that will release exclusively in grade school sizing. Now, I don't believe this pair will be linked to Bugs Bunny, but it does represent a rabbit. And I feel like they should have dropped these during Easter. And this shoe features a light smoke gray, total orange, white, and stadium green color combination. Utilizing white leather on the upper with the same shade on the mesh tongues, laces, and midsole. Gray suede and fur lands on the overlays that represents a rabbit's fur. And then we have an orange embroidered swoosh logo that extends to the hill, which is for a carrot. Now on the hill, there's a little bit of green and that's for the top of a carrot. Lastly, that same shade of green covers the rubber outsole. Now we don't have a specific release date, but they are expected to debut this fall and the retail price will be 95. Images just leaked of the Air Jordan 38. This colorway is known as Fundamental and it features a white, black, and siren red color combination. Now, traditionally, this shoe is supposed to be inspired by the Air Jordan 8. We have the Air Jordan 37 inspired by the 7, the Air Jordan 36 inspired by the 6, and so forth. Now, there's only two things on this shoe that I see that is inspired by the 8, and this is a 100% stretch because I looked at the shoe and I just don't see it. One would be the branding on the tongue. So, on the Air Jordan 8, we have that carpet-like circle that lands on the tongue. Well, this one has a circle, but it doesn't look like it's using the same materials. And then from what I've seen online, there is an X on the outsole, which you'll see in these images. And that's supposed to represent the cross straps on the Air Jordan 8. Now, other than the color description and the breakdown of the shoes, we don't have the technology used. That has yet to be unveiled. But as you can see, it comes in mid-top form. We have white on the base and black overlays across the panels that extend to the ankle. The Jumpman logo is placed on the tongues and heels with red details throughout. And then finishing the look is a translucent outsole. So this pair is expected to release on August 18th and the retail price will be 200. It's not a bad looking shoe. It reminds me of the Shock BB4. It's just, I don't see the inspiration from the Air Jordan 8. Official images also leaked of the Air Jordan 1 KO bleached aqua. And we do have a release date change. I believe this shoe was expected to release in the beginning of May. However, it's now going to release on May 25th and the retail price will be 150. Now, what I do like about the shoes is the bleached aqua looks a lot brighter in these photos. I know in previous photos, it looked kind of dull. So that's a plus for me. 
but I don't think I'm going to be rushing to grab a pair. I might just wait and see if they go on sale. New images of the Air Jordan 1 KO Low Bread have arrived and this will probably be the pair that I pick up. And I've seen some people wearing them and they look good on feet. Not this specific colorway, but I saw somebody wearing the shadows. They look really nice, just the overall look. So I'm going to assume that these will also look nice on feet, but they come in your standard bread color blocking constructed with canvas. We also have leather on the swoosh logos and my favorite detail on the shoe, even though it's going to be hidden when you wear it, is the size stamped on the liner. Now, for those that are interested in purchasing, this pair is currently scheduled for July 1st and the retail price will be 120 I heard about this shoe releasing, I was waiting to see pictures, and it's the Air Jordan 1 KO Low Panda. Now, you guys already know I dislike that nickname, but it is what it is. To me, you can call new models pandas, but I'm never going to call the Air Jordan 1 High 85 Panda. That's, that's just me. You can call them what you want, though. Now, we saw the Shadow and Deep Royal Blue Pairs release. They dropped on May 1st. We just previewed the Bread Pair, which will release on July 1st. And this one comes dressed in a white black and cell color combination. So constructed with the usual canvas, we have black leather on the swoosh logos and hill overlays with Nike logos on the tongue labels and insoles. White canvas covers the base. We also have the wings logo embroidered on the hills and the size is stamped on the liner. Other details includes a cell midsole and a black rubber outsole. Unfortunately for this pair, we don't have a release date, but they are expected to debut later this year and the retail price will be 120. I believe the first set of images of the Air Jordan 1 Low OG UNC2 Chicago weren't that great. Recently, some product photos came out, which gives us a detailed look. I believe these are from JD Sports, and this pair will be a women's exclusive release, and they feature a black, dark powder blue, and gym red color combination. What a lot of people don't know is, when the first UNC2 Chicago Air Jordan 1 released in 2020, Z Sneakerhead Z and I were able to see the shoes months before they released. But we were trying to come up with a nickname. And somehow we came to the point of calling them UNC2 Chicago. And that name has stuck, which I thought is kind of cool. It wasn't what Jordan Brand suggested. In some cases, they actually have nicknames. This one, there wasn't a nickname, just the colorway and there was a picture. But as you can see, they're just like the pair that released in 2020, but this time around, they're in low top form. So they are expected to release on July 26th, and the retail price will be 140 Once again, I want to apologize for not including this shoe in the May release dates video. This is probably one of the biggest drops, and for some reason, I just didn't include it. I had a list of all the releases that I was going to talk about, and this just wasn't on it. I don't know why, I just slipped my mind i guess but definitely won't happen again and for those that don't know this is the air jordan one high og spider verse so why i'm talking about them right now is for one i missed it in the last video and for two official images did pop up so they did do a shock drop on them i personally know a lot of people who got pairs on the shock drop so if you're really wanting a pair don't buy it resell just be patient i know people are asking well into the 300s for these and I don't think you should spend that, but it is your money. You can do as you please. And for those that still want to purchase, they drop on May 20th. They'll also be available in full family sizing. So adult sizing will retail at 200. Grade school is priced at 150. Preschool sizing will cost you 90. And toddler sizing will retail at 75. Dropping in August, we have the Air Jordan 2 Low Sky J Orange. This is a women's exclusive and it comes dressed in a Sky J Orange, Mauve, and Cell color combination. This pair features Sky J Orange on the upper while constructed with new buck and suede, which gives them a premium look in my opinion. Mauve accents adorn the trimming, liner, insoles, and heel counter, and then red fills in the tongue and insole branding. Cell covers most of the sole, and then we have Sky J Orange hinted on the outsole to finish the look. Now, I don't believe these will be available in extended women's sizing, and currently they're scheduled to debut on August 10th, and the retail price will be $150. These aren't bad in my opinion. I actually kind of like them, but let me know your thoughts down below. I made a mention about the Jordan Airship Every Game in Red 
releasing in my previous video. I don't believe it was the release dates one. I believe it was the one previous to that. And recently we received a first look. So this shoe features a Summit White, Dun Red, Mystic Red, and Coconut Milk color combination. Going over the pair, they feature Summit White suede on the base and red crack leather on the swoosh logos, eye stays, and hills. Nike Air branding lands on the tongue labels while every game is embroidered on the hill tabs. Other details includes Summit White on the midsole and a red rubber outsole. Now they're currently scheduled for May 10th, which is the same day as the blue pair. However, I have yet to see them pop up on release calendars. It could be overseas or it could be somewhat of a scattered release. There's still some time for them to pop up, but I'll be honest, I won't be shocked if the release gets pushed back. The only thing with the airship is a lot of the other colorways that dropped, they didn't have a set in stone release date. Whenever shops got them, they just kind of threw them out there. They made an IG post that they got them in and they sold out pretty fast. But for now, May 10th is the release date. If anything changes, I'll make sure to let you guys know. And the retail price is 140. Some product shots of the Air Jordan 1 High OG Palomino recently leaked. These are from JD Sports. And this shoe might be one of the most anticipated releases of fall when it comes to the Air Jordan 1. Now, other than the new images, the reason I'm talking about them again is because they had a release date change. So, originally they were scheduled for September 16th, but now they've been pushed forward and will debut on September 2nd. The retail price will be $180. I've been waiting for this shoe to leak. It's the Air Jordan 1 High OG Praline. Now, this is a women's exclusive release and is inspired by luxury handbags. This pair features a praline, white, and cell color combination. Now, in my opinion, they could easily release in men's and women's sizing with the exception of the laces. As you can see, they are satin flat laces. Now, I personally wouldn't wear them with that, but outside of the laces, the color blocking, it looks good. We also have more satin, which lands on the liner. Constructed with leather, we have white on the base and praline overlays, which also lands on the swoosh and the rubber outsole. Finishing the look is cell, which lands on the tongue and the midsole. Currently scheduled to release on September 13th, the retail price will be 180. Chris Paul will have another Air Jordan release. This time it's going to be the Air Jordan 1 Low OG. So the details are slim on this. We don't have any images. However, this pair will come dressed in a light cream and cell color combination. More than likely, what you can expect is his CP3 branding, which is seen on his past Air Jordans, as well as his signature line, which no longer is releasing. And other than that, we know that they'll be available in men's sizing. So that's pretty much it other than the release date and the retail price, which they are expected to debut on October 24th, and the retail price will be 150. J Balvin first connected with Jordan brand in 2020, and the outcome was the Air Jordan 1. In 2022, he released his own Air Jordan 2 collaboration, and now in 2023, he's going to release his own Air Jordan 3. Now, unfortunately, we don't know how the shoe is going to look. The image used is just the Photoshop. This isn't to represent what's coming. And for now, all we know is that the shoes will feature a multicolor color combination. The color description is literally multicolor, multicolor, multicolor. So more than likely, you can expect a lot going on with this shoe. As well, it'll feature J Balvin's branding. Now, as for the looks, that's all the information I have, which is very slim. They are currently expected to debut on September 2nd, and we don't have a retail price. Hopefully, it's not some crazy retail price. I know the Air Jordan 2, I believe, was 300 I liked his Air Jordan 2, but that's the reason why I pass on them because of that high retail price. Also, I almost forgot to mention the collection will feature apparel in unisex sizing, which includes leather vest and a woven jacket. So that's pretty much it. Once I have more information, I'll make sure to let you guys know. In one of the previous videos, we received a first look at the Air Jordan 4 Red Cement. I believe it was in preschool sizing, so it wasn't the best look. But now we have a first look at the adult pair and this actually comes from the sneakers app. So currently they're getting ready to do a Jordan retro preview. And on the thumbnail, it's this shoe, the Red Cement Air Jordan 4. So that will take place on Friday. And after the showcase, I'm sure we'll have a 
pretty decent look. Probably not the best look, but this is what we have for now. Now, for those that don't know, the inspiration for the shoe, the blocking that is, is the white cement Air Jordan 4 and the fire red Air Jordan 3. This pair is starting to grow on me a little bit, I can't lie. At first, I thought it was atrocious. I thought there's no way I would buy it, but it's slowly growing on me. I gotta admit it. And currently, they're expected to drop August 12th, and the retail price will be 210 This pair is really nice as well. It's the Air Jordan 12 filled purple. Some people are calling them Lakers, and that's due to the fact that they resemble Gary Payton's Air Jordan 12 PE when he played for the Lakers. Now, this shoe features a black filled purple and taxi color combination. Utilizing black leather on the upper and purple on the mudguard, and most of the rubber outsole. We have metallic gold on the top eyelets and taxi on the branding down the tongue and heel tabs. This pair is nice, I like them, and they drop on July 29th. The retail price will be 200. I'm gonna be real with you guys. If I was sent this image, I wouldn't have leaked it. This is probably one of the worst first looks I've seen of a shoe, but everybody's talking about it and sharing it. Well, they were when it first leaked. This is the Air Jordan 1 High OG Satin Bread. Now, what it looks like they did to me is they cut the background out of the shoe, whoever originally got this photo, and then they placed it on this brick background. So that's why you see the toe, it's like cut at the edge. Also, you can see kind of the lines, it's a little sloppy around the ankle. And to be honest with you, after this image leaked, I thought, Maybe in the next several days, we're going to get a lot more photos, and that wasn't the case. Nothing else has leaked, and since it is news and it's something to look at, I decided to include it. For those that don't know, this will be a women's exclusive release. They first released back in 2016. Back then, they were known as the Band Air Jordan 1. Jordan Brand was going through their whole band campaign that year. And this shoe was limited to 501 pairs. They released exclusively at a pop-up shop in New York City on October 18th, which is known as Band Day. But the real shoe that was banned is the Airship. I have a feeling within the next several weeks, we're going to get better images. But unfortunately, this is what we have for now. And they are currently scheduled to release on October 18th. And the retail price will be 180 Now, I know a lot of people have been asking about extended women's sizing. And I don't believe that they're going to release an extended women's sizing. However, I don't have 100% confirmation on that. But once I do, I'll make sure to let you guys know. One of the pairs I'm most excited for this summer is the return of the Air Jordan 8 playoffs. We now have a first look at the 2023 pair. And for those that don't know, they've released a total of three times. This will be the fourth. They first dropped back in 1993, and then the first retro came out in 2007. The last time we saw the pair release was in 2013, so 10 years ago. Now, one thing I do like is they brought back the red hill pull tabs. From what I'm seeing, everything looks pretty on point to the OG. I do own the OG colorway from 93. I also have the 2007, and I'm pretty sure I have the 2013. So it might be kind of nice to do a comparison of all three, or I should say all four, including this one. Maybe I'll hit up Z Sneakerhead Z and see if he'll let me borrow his pair because that's where these images came from. And then I can do a comparison with my OG pair. But they are currently scheduled to release on September 30th and the retail price will be 210 And that's going to do it for this video. Like always, greatly appreciate you guys for watching. If you have a second and haven't done so already, also appreciate a thumbs up and if you're new here make sure to subscribe by hitting the button below also make sure to turn on the notification bell so you can be alerted every time i drop a new video now expect another video monday i also plan on rolling out shorts either next week or the following week i have a few ideas now let me know what you liked or disliked down in the comments below as well if you have any questions leave that down below I know I have a lot of comments to respond to. I've been kind of behind on a lot of work, so I will respond to you guys on the last two videos. Again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned to sneakerfiles.com, and if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe.